Welcome back to Newsmaker. We've repeatedly tackled a subject on this program that was once taboo. UFOs, or Unexplained Aerial Phenomenon, UAPs. The sightings have increased, and the government has done a complete about-face recently, encouraging those who've seen these craft to come forward. Why are they doing this? Well, we're taking a deep dive into this subject with a guy who's become the tip of the spear on the subject, Jeremy Corbell. That's coming up in January, only on our digital platforms. But tonight, we're going to give you a sneak peek of that conversation. That's the essence of what journalists are really supposed to do. Ask the questions and have an open mind and open heart and see what they've got. And let's hear it out. Let's hash it out. You talked about being kind of blown away with, with this propulsion idea. I, the analogy I make when people say, well, even if there's life out there, they can't visit us because there's no way, it's, the distances are too great. And my answer to that is, what if you had told Magellan in 1500 when he was sailing the oceans, hey, this little journey that's taken you three years, someday you're gonna climb in a metal tube with wings on it like a bird and you'll be able to do it in hours. Would he have believed it? Right, and, and you know, as you're saying that, I kind of get goosebumps, because if I remember correctly, in our first interview, I, I said something to the effect of, you know, we're, we're just at the point where we're, we're saying, hey, look, there's probably intelligent life out there, but the question we really should be asking is, are they coming here? And I said that, like, maybe in like 10 years, we'll, we'll be having that conversation. And here we are eight years later, and I feel like we're on the cusp of that. So to your point, you know, it's like, of course, anything that is outside of our scope of understanding, it seems magical to us. But it doesn't mean that it is. It just means that we haven't gotten to that point of being able to replicate it or duplicate it. So if indeed UFOs are real, and if they are from somewhere else, and if they are somehow getting here from distances that baffle us, then there is just a technological answer to that. That's why I call it the UFO problem. I feel like there's a solution. Yes, I agree with that because how do we know that these civilizations, if they're out there, and I think you know most people now believe that there's intelligent life out there somewhere. There's life out there and then intelligent life's a different question. But if they are advanced, let's say they're advanced beyond us by a billion years, what could they technically have that we can't even fathom? So I think, I think we have to keep an open mind about this. Yeah, I mean, it behooves us to keep an open mind about it. You know, some would say that there is a lot of evidence that there is a technology that is in our skies that is far beyond anything that we have. And our military has, has admitted that much. Our government to date has admitted that much, that there are craft that do things that seem impossible to us with our basic understanding of physics, and we don't know who flies them. So this, this basic concept of, of us catching up, look, mathematicians, physicists, theoretical physicists, people for, for, for ages have said, we're a young solar system. We're, we're in a huge, huge, vast ocean of potentiality for life. Of course, life and even intelligent life exists out there somewhere. But the question always has, is there a capability to get here? There are likely star systems and exoplanets that harbor life that have had longer than we have had to develop technologically. But also, it's possible that the technologies or the development on those exoplanets have just taken a divergent path. Maybe they're not burning fossil fuels. Maybe they learn different types of ways to manipulate our physics that just put them on a different trajectory than here on Earth. Okay, so this is the thing that's, that's gotten my attention. When we met first time eight years ago, this was kind of a taboo subject. And I know you were skeptical of me because you dealt with journalists before. But again, my posture is I have no idea. And if I pretend I actually know the answer, I'm an idiot. There's so much we don't know that to, to claim, well, this is nonsense. That is so ridiculous as a journalist to just say, nah, it can't be. So my posture's been, we're gonna just explore this and talk about it. But what's interesting and what's changed, and I wanna know why you think it's changed. 
the government is now saying, yeah, there's stuff going on that we can't quite explain. They're opening hearings. They're talking about it openly. Now they've opened two portals for the government, for pilots, military, to put videos in, then another one for the public to put their stuff in that they observe. They are now inviting this, and I'm wondering why. And my only suspicion is that they are concerned that we might make contact sometime in maybe the near future, and they want to soften the battlefield so that we don't freak out collectively. Look for details in the upcoming weeks on how and when you can watch the entire conversation with Jeremy Corbell. Newsmaker will be right back.